Hello and welcome back to the Waters and Stanton video channel. If you've been messing about with antennas for as long as I have, you pick up one or two tips and tricks. And so I want to mention a couple of these in this video. The first one is um, concerning a problem I had with uh, an NFET half wave. Now, if you've messed about with NFET half waves, you've probably noticed that as you go higher in frequency, in theory, the harmonic should be directly related to the fundamental. Now, I was um, playing around with a 20 meter end fed half wave, in other words, 10 meter length of wire, which resonates as a half wave on 20 meters. And that worked fine, uh, connecting a 49 to one unun at the feed point, no problem at all. But I noticed that the harmonic, the first harmonic, which was uh, 20, or should have been 28 megahertz, was actually just outside the band, just above 30 megahertz. Now, I don't know whether you've noticed this, but I've noticed time and time again that as you go higher in frequency, there's not a direct relationship with the fundamental, and it gets really bad on 10 meters. And I was suffering this problem, that uh, I resonated the antenna um, at the bottom of the band, 14 megahertz for CW operation, but the harmonic on 10 meters was actually resonating at just outside the band, about 30.1 megahertz. And I'm not sure of the reason for this. It may be problem with the matching units. It may be just the way that these NFED uh, antennas work. But I've noticed it time and time again using different matching units, different 49 to one anons. And I'm sure that some of you had the same problem. Now there's a trick which I picked up many years ago, because if you've played around with a 40 meter dipole, you're told that it will also operate on the third harmonic, which is 21 megahertz. But in actual fact, if my memory is right, I think that you'll find that the antenna on 21 megahertz, your 40 meter dipole, while it will work on 21 megahertz, it actually shows resonance just outside the top of the band. And there's a trick you can do to bring that resonant point down. And it's effectively using a capacity hat or a bit of capacity wire, which is simply a length of wire. So let me draw you on a bit of paper here, the way that, the way that you normally use, um, if you know the trick of course, to bring the resonance of the 40 meter dipole on 21 megahertz down to within the band. Right, here's a 40 meter dipole. we feed it at the centre with coax cable. If we operate it on 21 megahertz, we get a waveform like this. A bit crude, but basically there's a voltage point there, there's a voltage point there, there's a voltage point there, there's a voltage point there. This is on 21 megahertz. Now the voltage point on any antenna is very sensitive and if we were to hang a capacity hat which is really just a length of wire at that point there, that point there, and I can't tell you the length, probably around about two, two feet, something like that, that has the effect of lowering the frequency on 21 megahertz because there are sensitive points there. So we have that wire there, it lowers the frequency on 21 megahertz, but it has minimal effect on 40 meters because the 40 meter voltage point is there and there. Nothing there at all, it's mainly current there. So if you want to operate your 40 meter antenna on 21 megahertz and you find that it's resonant outside the band, you hang a bit of wire at the voltage point there. In other words, you've got to work out what the half wavelength is um, on 21 megahertz, which in old money is around about 22 feet. So 22 feet in from each end, you measure it and hang a wire there. And you'll have to trim it um, to find out the right length, but it will actually drag down the resonance on 21 megahertz. It may affect slightly the resonance on 40 meters, very minimal, I, I imagine. But that's the way that we used to get the antenna to resonate both on 40 meters and 21 megahertz within the band. 
Now this effect can be used on the 10 meter length of wire, which is a half wave dipole on 20 meters. If you want to bring that 10 meter resonance down within the band, it's quite simple. What you do is you bear a bit of the wire at the center of the antenna. In other words, you've got 10 meter length of wire, you bear it at the five meter point, which is the center of the 20 meter dipole. You bear that and you simply attach a length of wire around about, well, <coughs> I'm in feet and inches. I found around about uh, one and a half foot of wire attached to the center dangling down actually acts as a capacitor hat and it has effect on the 10 meter band much more than the 20 meter band. And the reason is, if you look at a diagram, you find that the maximum voltage point on 20 meters is at either end of the 10 meter length of wire. But on the first harmonic, which, which enables the antenna to operate on 10 meters, you've got a voltage point on 10 meters, which is at the center. And it is the voltage point that is most sensitive to any changes. So if you hang a length of wire on that voltage point, in other words, halfway down the wire, um, you'll find that it drags the 10 meter resonance down and it has much more effect on 10 meters than, than the 20 meter band. So by adding around about 18 inches of wire to the center of my 20 meter half wave, 20 meter half wave, in other words, the 10 meter length of wire, by adding about 18 inches to the center, um, just dangling down, I lowered the frequency dramatically on 10 meters and it had minimal effect on the 20 meter band. And then I had an antenna which was resonant within the 20 meter band and within the 10 meter band. So if you've noticed this problem, and I'm sure many of you have, try it out. It's a neat trick and it works. Now here's one of the most important things that I found when I was messing about with antennas. And uh, I'm sure that you will have experienced the same problem. You know, very rarely can you believe what a VSWR meter reads, whether it be in the rig or with an antenna analyzer, if you miss this trick. Common mode currents, we all heard about common mode currents flowing down the kite's cable. Even when you do measurements on an antenna, you still can suffer with common mode current problems. And what happens is that you get erroneous readings. Let me show you an example, and this is a fairly simple example. It's a very common example. You're measuring an antenna, you're measuring the VSWR, you're scratching the head because, because things don't seem to be working as you'd expect. One of the biggest problems when you're checking VSWR on antennas is to not know about this secret, this trick. Take a look. Now, if you look at this measurement I've got here, um, I'm showing the VSWR on this meter. Look what happens if I hold the metal. It changes the VSWR. That's a sure sign that you've got common mode problems on the coax and you can't believe what you're reading. You need to add some form of line isolator. And the best form of line isolator I've found is a reasonable size ferrite core and you wind around about eight or 10 turns of coax around it. This core is, um, a 240-43 mix ferrite core and you just wind some coax around it right at the point where it's about to enter the transceiver or in this case the antenna analyzer and that gets rid of your common mode currents and also of course gives you an accurate VSWR reading and you create that uh, common mode choke by winding coax around it you need to start further up the coax because you really need to get around about eight or ten turns on and you need to fasten it with some sort of tie wrap but you get the idea you wind this uh, coax around there eight or ten turns and that gets rid of your common mode currents and gives you accurate reading a simple trick but one that many people don't know about and it can save you hours of confusion 
when you're measuring VSWR and trying to adjust antennas. So there we are, two simple tricks. I hope it's been educational. It's based on my experience. You know, when you mess about with antennas, you can waste an awful lot of time, but you pick up one or two tricks like this and it saves so much time. In the meantime, thanks for supporting this channel. Thanks for supporting us down at uh, Milton Keynes. Um, don't forget to check our website. We've got some great deals there. And whatever equipment you want to get, whether it's accessories or mainline gear, give us a call, go on the website, speak to somebody. We're all licensed amateurs down there. And we'll be happy to do a deal. And of course, part exchange. Don't forget part exchange. You can save you an awful lot of money. In the meantime, you enjoy your home radio and look forward to seeing you as usual in the next video. Bye for now.